Hariyo Vakratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Samaprabha Nirvignam Kurume Deva Sarvakaryashu Sarvada Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwaraha Guru Saksha Parabrahma Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Namaste friends, welcome to the 23rd session of the series gift Gita for Inner Freedom and Transformation a study of selected verses from Bhagavad Gita based on uh, Shankara Bhashyam. We continue with the fifth chapter, Karma Sanyasa Yoga. In these verses, Krishna speaks of a benefit of one particular value, dispassion, vairagya. Krishna speaks of the limitations of the external dependence for happiness, especially psychological dependence on people, things, situation. We must practice to withstand and not give in to our raga and dvesha. I invite Dr. Sundar to introduce and moderate this session. Over to you, Dr. Sundar. Sada Shiva Samaram Bham Shankara Charya Madhyamam Asmada Charya Patriyantam Unde Guru Param Param Pariyom Shri Guru Bhyonamaha As we conclude the fifth chapter, I wish to give a bird's eye view of this chapter, the journey we have covered so far. So the second and the 18 chapters of the Gita are said to be the summary chapters and they sequentially cover the sadhanas of Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga. The idea is one purifies the mind with Karma Yoga and one comes to know about his true nature through Jnana Yoga and then one is free. So these two steps, the Jnana Yoga part being little more subtle and difficult, we saw earlier was explained in the fourth and the fifth chapters, while the Karma Yoga portion was dealt with in the third chapter. At this point, I wish to draw an interesting reference to how the third chapter begins and how the fifth chapter begins because there is a similarity. The third chapter begins on the heels of the second chapter where Jnana Yoga was covered in two segments and Arjuna asking if Jnana Yoga is so important, why do you ask me to do Karma Yoga? Yayasi Chet Karma Nahte Mata Buddhar Janardana was the question there in the beginning of the third chapter. And now again in the fifth chapter, we see a similar beginning. Um, Arjuna is asking a similar question that if Sanyasa Ashrama is better, why do you ask me to take to Grihastha Ashrama? This question is based on the Jnana Karma Sanyasa portion in the fourth chapter between the 18th and the 24th verses, seven, the set of seven verses, where in the middle, in the 21st verse, Krishna prays the sannyasi jnani and three verses before and after that were in praise of a grihastha jnani. And yet we see Arjuna asking this question that why he should take up the sannyas, grihastha ashrama and not sannyas ashrama. So repeatedly we see Arjuna trying to avoid the unpleasant job at hand, which is to wage the Mahabharata battle in which he has to slay his close relatives as well as his teachers. So the fundamental question is, why is he trying to avoid this unpleasant action? So having been student of Vedanta, we should understand that the cause, main cause is ignorance of one's true self. Being not aware of true self, Arjuna is looking out of himself for completion, 
happiness, security, and peace. And this leads to an error in judgment. And he is going as per his ragadveshas and not as per dharma. The teaching at the end of the Gita is, if there is purnatvam or fulfillment, then automatically one's ragadveshas get aligned with dharma. Therefore, there is no scope of uh, having making that mistake. Coming back to this chapter, so this was Arjuna's doubt. Why should I take to Grahastha Ashrama? Why don't I take to Sanyas Ashrama and avoid this battle? And in the second part of this chapter starts the teaching of Lord, Lord Krishna. We saw in the third chapter also the answer for this dilemma between Karma and Jnana Yoga was that both the sadhanas are important. You cannot take to any one of them. And you have to take to them sequentially. You have to do Karma Yoga first and then you have to take to Jnana Yoga. The answer to the similar question in this chapter, however, is that there is a choice with regard to the Ashrama. You can either take to Grahastha Ashrama or you can take to Sanyas Ashrama. In either of them, you have to follow Karma Yoga and then do Jnana Yoga. About that, there is no choice. But about the Nishtha, about the between the two nishthas, there is a choice. One can take to Grihastha or Sanyasa. But then we see in the verses, Lord Krishna is very categorically saying for majority of people, the Grihastha Ashrama is better than Sanyasa Ashrama. The simple reasons given in the verses were that there is a lot of opportunity for Chitta Shuddhi in Grihastha Ashrama, not so much in Sanyas Ashrama. That's why it is better to take to Grihastha Ashrama. The second thing is the Grihastha Ashrama gives some protection in the form of family and society, whereas Sanyas Ashrama for the unprepared person can be a nightmare. Krishna glorifies, therefore, Grihastha Ashrama by saying that both of them are equal. By taking to either of them, you will reach to the same goal. So he has presented that Grihastha Ashrama is the suitable one for most of us. Having done that, the chapter then moves on to the goalpost. What is the vision of a jnani? And this was beautifully described in the verse Pralapan, Vishrajan, Grahnan, Unmishan, Nimishan. In all the activities that a person does, Naiva Kinchit Karomi. So this is the vision. So he is completely unaffected and he is detached in whatever the Jnanendriyas and Karmendriyas are doing. And this vision appears quite difficult for a seeker. Therefore, this chapter then presents in the fourth and fifth parts of this chapter, sequentially Karma Yoga as a sadhana and then Jnana Yoga as the sadhana. So the, we can call this as sadhana dvayam. And the Jnana Yoga portion encompasses the verses of Jnana Karma Sanyasa, which were similar to the verses in the previous chapter. The Sadhana the Karma Yoga portion had popular verses like Brahman, Evada, Karmani, and we had verses like Kaina, Manasa, Buddhya, famous verses which were about Karma Yoga. And the Jnana Yoga verses, there were several important verses like Sarva Karmani, Manasa, Sanyasya, and Nadatte, Kasya, Jitpapam, Nachaiva, Sukritam, Vibhu, Jnane, Natud, Ajnanam, Esham, Nashitam, Atmanaha. So these were the popular verses that we saw in the uh, Jnana Yoga part of the Sadhana Dvayam. After that, the chapter moves on to describe some sadhanas for Jnana Yoga because Jnana Yoga is very subtle and although this seeker is an advanced seeker who has come through Karma Upasana Yoga, he has Jnana Yogyata, it still is difficult. Therefore, the Upanishad is going to give certain sadhanas for Jnana Yoga and that is where we are in this portion of the chapter. And to take the verses further, I invite Dr. Ravishankar sir to present the first verse of today. Thank you. 
Glory to you, sir. Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. The 22nd verse of the 5th chapter is Yehi Samspar Shaja Bhoga Dukha Yonaya Evate Adhyanta Vantaha Kaunteya Na Teshu Ramate Budaha. As we move on, we realize that at this stage, thanks to Dr. Timar Pagir, sir, he has always and now brought us to this level of Nididhyasanam. We are now in Nididhyasanam as senior students of Vedanta. But we can slip and fall back. And that's why even at this stage, supportive disciplines of Vairagyam is essential. What happens if we don't have Vairagyam and we continue to be in Vishaya Ananda? We miss the Vairagya Ananda, which is Atmananda or Vidyananda. And it is a cause of Dukkha or pain. Since organs left by themselves are not a problem, but when there is some sparsha hogaha, when they have an interaction with the sense objects vishaya, we end up having vishayananda. We move on further to see that this vishayananda is the dukkha yonaha, yoni. Karanani, it is the karana. It is the reason why what dukkha can happen. Any interaction has a beginning and an end. But the Buddha, a nididhyasana yogi, he knows that prarabdha will bring vishayananda, so he doesn't reject the vishayananda. But what does he do? Naramate, he doesn't enjoy or revel in it. Ram is the root word of this word, ramate. We further go to see that when we have an ice cream cone and we are about to eat it or lick it, quite a bit of it we enjoy. But because of the heat, it also melts and we miss out on some of it. Do we enjoy the happiness of having the ice cream or do we have pain because we lose the melting ice cream? So also, when we see the image of ourselves in the mirror, the mirror is taken off. Does the image also go and I remain the same? Is something that we must clearly understand. So, Vishayananda is Dukkha Karana and this is by wrong perception. In the Bhashya, Yehi Yasmat Samsparshaja Vishayendriya Samsparshehya Jataha Boga Bhuktaya Dukkha Yoneha Evate Avidya Kritatvat. So this is the reason. And Shankaracharya says, it's because of ignorance. It's Avidya Kritatvat. The Vedantic understanding is under, explained by Swami Paramartha Nandaji as follows. Vishaya Ananda should be understood as Vishayasya Ananda. It is Vishaya Pratibhimbita Ananda. And that is explained as understood as Atmananda. So when the Vishaya goes away, it's only that the Vishya goes away. But I would never say that Ananda has gone away because Sampurna Ananda persists. We further move to see that this Avidya Krita Vishayananda is Dukkha Hetu. It is responsible for Dukkha. But Vidya Krita Vishayananda is not Dukkha Hetu. So if there is Vidya, if there is knowledge, and then we understand Vishayananda, you are never in Dukkha. Further, Vishayananda by itself is not Dukkha Karanam, but it is the misperceived Vishayananda which is responsible for our Dukkha. And so the Jnani, he enjoys the Vishayananda with this awareness. We further go to see that all this that we have explained by till now is Drishyante, experienced by each one of us. And this Dukkha, we can understand to be in the Adhyatmika, Adi Bhautika or the Adi Daivika realms. But they are all Tan Nimittani. They are all just a cause. But the misperception is actually the reason. Swami Paramartha Nandaji clearly reminds us again of the 14th verse of the second chapter which all of us know. And says that Yata Iha Loke, like in this Loka, the same can persist even in the Paraloka. So don't expect that things will change when we go to Swarga. We further move on to understand 
that Indriyani Nivartayet is a part of the previous shloka. And what does the Buddha, uh, the Buddha, the Nididhyasana Yogi, he is constantly aware that the Anatma Vishayas, which is people, objects and situations, is just a fragrance of Sukha. Sukhasya Gandhamatram Api. Happiness nasti. There is absolutely no happiness there. And there is a beautiful example given in the Gopi Gita. Nakhalu Gopi as it goes. To understand that the Gopis were missing Krishna as a physical form. As Bhagwan Krishna as they saw him. Krishna as the Shariram was explained as Vishayananda. And that was responsible for Dukkha Yonaha. But as we know the law and it is true for all the sense objects. Bhagwan Shariram is also a cause of Dukkha. So the understanding is Atma Jnanam is the most important to, to be very clear about the misperceived conception of the, the understanding of this Vishaya Ananda. We further go to see that Vishinoti Badnati Iti Vishaya. So if there is something in front of us, it is the bondage by creating attachment which is the cause of the uh, Vishaya Ananda. It is the misconception that this object or this person or this place is a source of my comfort, security and happiness. But I always know that I am the only source of peace, security and happiness which is permanent. And hence, Vairagyam as we understand is a sadhana for Karma Yoga. But Vairagyam in our stage of Nididhyasana should be natural and spontaneous. What does that mean? Vairagyam is to be completely free of Ragadvesha. In Karma Yoga, Ragadvesha is avoided by Vishwarupa Darshanam. But in our stage of Nididhyasanam, the universe is Vishwarupa Ishwara with the understanding that all the universe is Mithya. We further go on to understand that Mithya is Aparaprakriti. Paraprakriti is I the observer which is the only Satyam. So Vairagyam reduces Ragadvesha and we continue to be in the binary format. If the discipline of Vairagya, even though we are in Nididhyasanam, reduces, we shift to the triangular format. Swami Paramarthanand ji has given this example in the Chandogya. Bhuma vidya yo vai bhuma tat sukham na alpe sukhamasti. Anatma eva sukhamasti is wrong. Atma eva sukhamasti is important and this is understood by the Buddha. This is like a mirage. Vishaya mrigatrishni ayaha. These mirage-like is the sense objects. And Shankaracharya is conveying the mithyatvam of the universe. And he says that the ahankara, mamakara, tyaga is the most important for nivritti marga. Therefore, the sense pleasure is the beginning of contact between the sense object and the sense organ. But it is adhyavantaha. It comes and it closes. It is fleeting. It is perishable. And it is between the adi and the antaha. And that is where we get stuck. We further go to see that na teshu ramate buddhaha. Such a buddhaha, such a viveki who is in nididhyasana, binary format yogi, avagata paramatma tattva, who has understood the Vedic teaching, na ramate, he does not indulge in the sense pleasures. And Shankaracharya says, foolish are they, childlike are these people, they are atyanta mudaha who continue to be in sense pleasures, only such people should be compared to Pashu Prabhartim, people who are like animals without a discriminatory power. Shri Guru Pyonama. Thank you, sir, for a detailed and complete explanation of this verse. As we saw in the early, earlier slide, we are now in that portion of the fifth chapter, which having covered the difficult Jnana Karma Sanyasa portion or the profound portion of this chapter is 
presenting some sadhanas to make this journey uh, better. So we are talking uh, here about an uh, advanced seeker and he has done Shravana Manana Nididhyasanam and he is in the process of becoming a Jnananista. He is in the process of concretize, concretizing his knowledge so that he doesn't slip from what he has gained so that he can always remain in that awareness. So the supportive discipline that is prescribed here is Vairagyam in these verses 21, 22, and 23. So as Sir has described, Bogaha Samsparshaja, so experiences which are coming from interaction between our senses and the sense objects. By the word in the last line, Ramate, we can come to know that these experiences in this verse mean pleasurable experiences only because it is saying Ramate. So even for such a jnani, we should understand that such uh, pleasurable experiences come his way. Although after becoming a jnani, he is no longer creating any further agami karma because of the sanchita bag which he has earlier and because of the prarabdha which fructifies for this particular janma, he is going to have some pleasurable experiences which come his way. And what is the attitude that is demanded of a jnani so that his jnanam remains as a nishtha? And it does not waver when such pleasurable experiences come its way. So this is what this verse is talking about. And it says that this jnani teshu na ramate, he does not revel in them. The reason for that is second, given in the second line, which is of the nature of viveka. He is aware that such pleasurable experiences are adivanta. So they are going to arrive and depart. They are not going to be permanently there. Therefore, they are dukkha yonayaha. So although these are pleasurable experiences which come towards him, they are eventually going to produce sorrow. This viveka he has. And because of this, he has this vairagyam and the ability not to prevail in them. So Swamiji explains that as Sir has also already explained, that Vairagyam stems at two levels. In one of the recent meets, there was a discussion about Vairagyam, which can be explained by this comprehensive um, explanation that Swamiji gives. At the Karma Yoga level, this person, or you can say at Vyavahara level, because he is beyond Karma Yoga now, he is a Jnani. But at Vyavahara level, he perceives everything around him as Vishwarupa Ishvara. Therefore, everything belongs to him. He clearly knows that I am a custodian and I am not the owner. And this brings him Vairagyam. The higher level of Vairagyam that this person gets, and that is because of Jnanam, that is because of resolving Jagat as Mithya, Therefore, there is one singular reality alone. So from what else he does, does he need to have Vairagyam from? So that is the higher level of Vairagyam for this Jnani. As Sir also explained that Vishaya becomes one when we empower it. Otherwise, a Vishaya, as Swamiji explains, is a mere Padartha. So Ajnanam is to believe that there is a secondary entity other than me. And once that Ajnanam comes, there is a Adhyasa. That, that second entity outside of me has the ability to fulfill me. Because of this Adhyasa, that Ananda, which is actually my own Ananda, as that singular um, existence of Brahman, my own Ananda, I give it to the Vishya and as if I make it Vishayananda. So this is the fundamental problem. Once the Ajnanam is removed, Adhyasa goes. Therefore, the Vishaya becomes Padartha. And then we have now disempowered it from its ability to 
hurt us emotionally. Okay, now go to the next verse, which also deals with the sadhana and which is on the similar lines. And for this, I invite Venkatesh Prasad, sir, to kindly present this verse. Over to you, sir. Hari Om. Shri Guru Pyonamaha. As beautifully explained by Dr. Ravi Shankar, sir, and Dr. Sundar, sir, in the previous verse, the value of mental preparedness or awareness to handle the pain of acquisition, preservation, and loss was pointed. Now, let us see 5.23 verse. The verse reads, Shaknoti haiva yas sodum prak sharira vimokshanat kama krodhod bhavam begam sa yuktaha sasukhi naraha. That person who is able to manage the impulse born of desire and anger here itself before the fall of the body is disciplined, he is happy. As we go to next slide, the second value that Krishna highlights in this 23rd verse is handling of Raga and Vesha, otherwise called Kama and Krodha. Raga means attachment to certain objects, Vesha means hatred or aversion towards certain other objects. And according to Vedanta, both are born out of misconceptions. Raga or attachment is born out of the notion that the world will give permanent happiness and security. And it is a misconception because no object in the creation, no person in the world can give permanent security and fulfillment as everything is Adhyanta Vantah Kaunteya as said by Krishna in the previous verse 5.22. Everything is subject to change. Similarly, Dvesha is also another misconception. Aversion is born out of the notion that the world is capable of giving me sorrow. But we find that Nanis are those people who live in the same world and they do not have sorrow. In the next slide we see now, the world is neither a source of joy nor a source of sorrow. And therefore, dividing the world into source of joy and source of sorrow according to Vedanta, is the fundamental misconception. It is I, it is I who make the world a source of joy and it is I who make the world a source of sorrow also. Kaivalya Upanishad declares, Mai eva sakalam jatam, mai sarvam pratishthitam, mai sarvam layam yati tad brahma vayam asmyaham. And as long as I do not discover this fact, I am going to blame the world. And as long as I blame the world, I will try to correct the world. I will try to change the world. So, therefore, we have to know that problem is not with the world, but the problem is with myself. And the moment I recognize that, I transcend Raga and Vesha, both attachment and aversion. Ignorant people will have happy or unhappy times, people, happenings and occasion. Wise person will see them as they are. As a matter of fact, without attaching any strings or happiness or sorrow, that world is seen as God's creation without any subjective projections. Until we come to that, Vedanta will not work. Vedanta requires objectivity. From Jiva Srishti, we have to go to Ishvara Srishti. From Ishvara Srishti alone, we can go to a Srishti. That is absolute. Krishna accepts that this is not an easy thing. Because we have subjective orientation and therefore we always judge and dub things as good or bad. Therefore, Krishna says you have to work throughout your life to get out of the hold of Raga and Vesha. It is not one year thing or two year thing. You have the entire lifetime to work on it. Let it be your lifelong project and you get over before you die. Next Janma, you can learn Vedanta. Therefore, Shariravi Mokshanat Prak. Before the fall of the body, the death, Shaknoti Sodhu. Suppose a person is able to handle, manage, and master Kama Krodhod Bhavam Vegam, the powerful influence of attachment and aversion. Vegam means powerful influence or impulse of Kama, desire and impulse of Krodha or anger. Krishna does not say you should not get rid, you should get rid of them. Krishna says, you be a master of them. This mastery here is called Sodam Shaknoti. The one you can master Raga Dvesha. If a person is able to achieve that before death, Krishna says, Sa Yuktaha. 
that person is an organized person that person is a master of himself so before you try to manage the world or your company or your organization or your family for that matter learn to manage yourselves and a person who has done that is called yukta integrated person same person sayeva narha according to krishna he alone deserves the name human the one who goes by the impulse cannot be called even a human being because he does not have self control therefore sa naraha not only that sa sukhi only that person can lead a happy life he alone can progress inwardly not those who are given to moods emotional catastrophes and when they are not able to handle that itself where is vedanta where is gnana yoga it is all far away therefore learned self management in other words raga dvesha management that is the prerequisite for self knowledge thank you hari om thank you hari om sir for that clear explanation of the verse so as we have seen earlier we are in that segment of the chapter where the prerequisites for gnanam to become gnana nishtha are being described as sadhanas for gnana yoga and there is an emphasis on vairagyam in this set of verses so a person who is having gnana nishtha is being described in this verse by lord krishna as sahanara yuktah sukhi cha bhavati and in the first line are given the conditions whereby from gnanam he can move to gnana nishtha what capacity should he have to have that nishtha yah shaknoti so he needs to have kama krodha udbhavam vedam shodham shodham is a management or ability to tackle tackle what kama krodha udbhavam vegam vegam is a kind of a force or a pressure through which kama and krodha are arising udbhavam remember once again that this is not a beginner seeker the verse is presenting a person who has been a successful karma yogi he has successfully done pravana manana nidhi dhyasanam and he is at the verge of parama purushartha for such a person before the tender plant becomes a huge tree which even an elephant cannot uproot for such a person who is like no longer just prepared cement on the floor but well concreteized cement what he needs to be alert about what he needs to be careful because even one slip may be quite costly for such a person we all know from the earlier chapters of the bhagavad gita that our thoughts are determined by our guna and our vasana even for a jnani his vasanas are and gunas are there because he comes into this particular janma with a particular sukshma sharira which has these vasanas and gunas in him we saw in the second chapter through the eight rung ladder of human fall in the 62nd and 63rd verses that not much control is there about the first thought the first thought that comes about so this vegam the force pressure is about that first thought becoming a huge thought build up a small flame becoming a conflagration so by the time that thought build up happens then um, it is now beyond uh, reproach it is now going down the cascade of eight ladder eight fold ladder of human fall so this verse is talking about that thought build up being prevented from happening so again this is emphasizing therefore about vairagyam to prevent that thought thought build up and it also sets the preconditions till when he needs to do that as sir has explained sharira vimokshanat so that this alertness is needed throughout the life till gnanam becomes a gnana nishtha pujya swami ji gives a, a kind of a mnemonic for proper handling of raga dveshas 
as red R E D D, and uh, the first R E is up to refine. So desires must be legitimate. So I should enforce the well-educated intellect because this person, as we have seen, has done Shravanamanan and Vidyasana. He has had enough about Vedantic knowledge. So that has to be used with Viveka Shakti and those thoughts which are not legitimate have to be nipped in the bud. So this is refined. What about moral desires? That also there has to be a moderation and one should not become addictive. So this Swamiji def uh, defines as disempowerment of the desires. So this is R-E-D and the last D is that there may be some of the moral desires which may not be fulfilled. So one should not become upset and come under the sway of that being upset. So do not allow a reaction to the unfulfilled desires, which is disarm. So with this, uh, the ability of the person who is on the verge of the Moksha Purushartha to hold on to himself till it becomes Jnana Nishta has been shown. In the subsequent verses, we are going to see what is the column. I invite Apeksha, madam, to present the next verse. Over to you, madam. Hari Om, sir. So today, the verse that I've been given is a very nice one. And it goes on to tell that who is the one who can become one with Brahman while living and even after death, how can one attain Brahman? So it says, you antaha sukho antara, antara ramaha tathant jyotirre yaha saha yogi brahma nirvanam brahma bhuto di gachati. That yogi whose happiness is within and whose recreation is within and whose vision is within has become brahman while living and attains oneness with brahman after death also. So let's look at this uh, verse in detail. It's a beautiful verse. Next slide, please. So Krishna is going to talk about uh, Jnana Falam here. He says, I've given the heading, I am happy with myself. That yogi who is happy with himself, a person who is emotionally sound. Because in the previous two verses, Krishna talks about how to become emotionally sound. Now he goes on to say, the person who is emotionally sound, who is able to enjoy the possessions and who is also able to enjoy the absence of possessions, likewise in a likewise manner like you know sit prajna then only self-knowledge can come and then only comes the inner strength and fulfillment who is not bothered by whether the possessions are there whether they are not there he will enjoy and he will enjoy even in their absence then only the self-knowledge steps comes and then only the inner strength and fulfillment will come next slide please so let's look at this part of it Anta sukha this word is very important he is Krishna is Lord Krishna here is talking about Antaha Sukha. So that yogi which is Antaha Sukha, the inner bliss who is happy with himself from inside has discovered fulfillment in himself. That, that idea that we have that you know things outside uh, the outside us will give us happiness has gone for that yogi. That yogi is Antar Sukha. So for example I have used uh, this uh, photo now in this photo you can see the sunlight is getting reflected in the water but the reflection of the sunlight is in water is nothing as compared to the original sunlight and the original brightness of the sunlight that comes in and the yogi realizes that the original brahman that we talk about the happiness that you get is far far more lasting the peace that you get is far far more lasting than the joy that is obtained from the outer senses or the outer things in the world so the joy that is obtained through the senses is just reflected happiness so whatever senses happiness they give us it is just the reflected happiness just like as it is being shown in this picture the reflected sunlight but it is nothing compared to the brightness of the original sunlight the brightness of the inner consciousness that we have the inner happiness that we have within ourselves so antar sukha that yogi which is antar sukha next slide please now the next important word in this shloka is antaraha ramaha what does that mean? The yogi which reveals in his inner self, 
where he rests in himself. What does that mean? The yogi, see, normally, you know, a human being is, you know, is always looking for the things outside, whether it is money, education, or the career, or the community, or the family that we have built, relationships, the belief, the mind is always working how, you know, we can get happiness from outside. But when the yogi has got an antarama, that is when he rests in himself, when he knows, he enjoys the company as well, the solitude. He's not bothered by people around him. He's not bothered by loneliness. He enjoys both the scenarios. He is just, you know, enjoying anything that comes up. So he is not attached to anything. That means antarama. So once that yogi has become antaraha, ramaha, then you can attain Brahman. Next slide, please. Now it talks about Jyot, Antara Jyotihi. That says that yogi which knows doesn't run after knowledge sources. Normally, you know, it's a very interesting point. When one starts in spirituality, every day we are looking how we can get more knowledge, more knowledge. We can hear more knowledge, 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 more sources of knowledge. Let's read this. Read, let's listen to this. Let's listen uh, to this Upanishad. We are always running after knowledge. But the person who has realized, who stops running after knowledge, who knows that the real knowledge is inside him only. That is the real light. That yogi attains Brahman. The realized seeker stops looking towards more and more sources of knowledge because he knows the original source of knowledge is within myself only. So it depicts the inner light of the self. Here, very one example, if you will see even traditional temples, if we go, you will see only in the, the center part, the Garbha Grah, where, you know, uh, Bhagwan is located, that is only lighted. And nowhere else there is light. Now, why was that? That is a depiction, that is a symbolic depiction of that, that the light is within you. There is no light outside that can light the light within you. The light is in, present inside you only. So traditionally our temples are, have also been made like this. So that yogi which realizes that the inner internal light of the self is the real light, that is the real light of knowledge is within him only, that yogi attains Brahman. So three words are very important. Antaha Sukha, one who is happy with himself, one who enjoys, who knows the real happiness lies within myself. Antar Rama, the yogi, which is at peace with himself. He won't rest in himself and he was not looking for outer things or relationships or communities. He enjoys everything in a likewise manner. And Antar Jyotiha, the, the yogi who knows that the real inner light of knowledge is self only. So those three qualities are very important and that yogi attains Brahmaha Bhuta. He has become one with Brahman. He has discovered the fact that I am really none other than Brahman. What does Brahman mean? I am full and complete within myself. I have everything inside me only. I do not need anything to be happy. I am always happy. And I am always, you know, nishin secure like they say. And, uh, you know, I would like to give this example. Uh, sir told us yesterday, right, there's a Zen master who does meditation, who's, who normally we are like the Zen master in the initial stage, right? If there's outside noise, when the frogs were croaking, he went and prayed to the frog. We does that prayer to our family people also. Please don't make noise during our meditation. Please don't uh, shout on us. Please don't do this to us. Please respect us. Please love us. That is like the common, you know, you know common things in every family, most of the families, in, you know, everywhere. So the real yogi is the one like in this story, like sir said, the Zen master went and prayed to the frog that please stop croaking so that I can do my meditation. And when he sits for meditation, he gets an answer from above, from within himself, where the inner light of knowledge is that you just, you know, stop the frogs from praying. And that's when he realized that the real, real, you know, happiness is no matter what happens outside, you are still able to meditate. You are still able to be the yogi who is, you know, resting in himself, who is happy with himself and who knows that all the knowledge is inside, irrespective of all the outer no noises. Next slide, please. So how long will you enjoy if you achieve all these three states and if you become like the Zen master, irrespective of the outer no noises, you are with you, you are happy with yourself, you are resting in yourself, and you are like, no, the inner knowledge is this, as long as you are alive. And even after death, also, even when the prarabdha is over, the karma is over, when this body goes away, because this yogi has discovered I am not this body and mind. 
so earlier he was the embodied consciousness he knows that in this body the consciousness resides after realizing this thing that you know i am the unembodied consciousness even after my death i'll still you know be able to enjoy this because it's everywhere so he attains videha mukti and krishna calls it brahma brahma nirvanam so free while living even free after death also next slide please so in other words this person this yogi attains the ultimate liberation or nirvana and libra what does liberation means it means two things it means destruction of all the limited belie beliefs and the notions of finite entity that we have made that i am this body i can only be happy from outside world you know the knowledge is all outside everything is just outside but you destroy all these limitations and you realize that everything is inside me and the next point also which is very important everything is inside me next slide please and the next realization everything is inside you as well as what is in oneself in myself it is same as what is in all the other people that are present all the other living beings everything that is present in this universe so that yogi attains brahman so i have used this photograph of all of us so even though we might look different even though our forms and shapes and faces might be different the consciousness remains the same and the yogi has realized this that you know we are all one and the same hari om thank you madam for the those colorful slides very lively and vibrant uh, photographs and also the nice story about the zen master and the croaking frog so we see the set of verses now going towards the end of the fifth chapter which are describing the the jnana phalam and the jnana phalam is basically jivan mukti and videha mukti let us see how that comes about this verse so this culmination is indicated in the last line saha yogi so this is a yogi who is now uh, done shravana manan vidyasanam he is brahma bhuta which refers to jivan mukti as madam has described and brahma nirvanam adigachati and this describes ah. 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 benefit of jnanam here and now and also after death so what is the phalam that uh, this person has makes us say that he is having jivan mukti and videha mukti so the key word here is antar jyoti so through the vedantic classes we have seen that the core essence in all of us is the awareness which is there all the time that consciousness pure consciousness is being referred to as antar jyoti so one who never loses sight of this awareness whatever he may be doing in and through all his activities he has this awareness in the bhashyam adi shankaracharya puts forth something that is very profound at this point and he says this word antah which allows me to restrict to this consciousness within me alone he replaces the word antah and he says that its meaning is atmani and we have already seen through the classes that atma as brahman is eka advitiya and advaita so therefore there is one reality alone which is immanent and transcendent through the matter so there is one reality alone so by replacing the word antah as atmani what adi shankaracharya does is that this person does not lose sight of awareness of this one reality not just within himself but out of him as well this is a game changer the reason is that as long as you believe that that reality is within yourself and that reality is more clearly manifest when i am not doing anything there is a tendency to feel that i need to sit in meditation i need to shut all my senses i need to now stop the thought process and then i have an opportunity an occasion 
with the witness consciousness, which is now more evident. By replacing Antaha with Atmani, what Adi Shankaracharya now does is that this singular reality is Ekaha, it is there everywhere. So therefore, it is out of me. I am in traffic, I am seeing uh, buses, I am seeing cars. Everything is Brahman in the guise of Bras. It is Brahman alone in the guise of car. It's just mere name and form. Brahman alone is. So this then affords uh, opportunity to be in touch, be in the blessing of this Brahman all the time. There is no need to close my eyes. Whatever I may be doing, I may be cooking, I may be operating. There is never a time when I have not had the touch of Brahman. So that blessing is there all the time. So, Yaha Anta Sukha then is the Ananda which arises at every moment because there is no moment when I am not having the blessing of Brahman, the touch of Brahman. Similarly, Anta Aramaha. In a way, this describes the Satchit and Ananda aspect which is there once you see that reality everywhere. There is not a moment when there is no touch of Brahman. So that is the phalam, which is the state of Jivan Mukti. So this in the next chapter is going to be elaborated over several verses. This mind-boggling concept of open-eye meditation. At every moment, I can question myself. Am I being meditative enough? Even when I'm operating, when I'm reading, when I'm cooking, we can ask the question, am I being meditative enough? Am I in touch with that singular reality? If I am, then I am meditative enough. Otherwise, I am not. It is not necessary to sit quietly in a room and close the eyes and do. So this is what is called as Sarvatra Sama Atma Darshanam or Abhyasa Brahma Abhyasa Rupa Nidhyasanam, which will be elaborated more in the uh, next chapter. We go to the next uh, palam. And for this, I invite uh, Chetana Madam. Over to you, madam. Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. The verse goes like this. Labhante Brahma Nirvanam Prishaya Shina Kalmasaha Chinna Dvaidha Yatatmanaha Sarva Bhuta Hite Rataha. This beautiful and complete verse is talking about the previous slide on the window. It's talking about the Jnana Yoga Phalam that a Jnani enjoys. But to reach this stage, the next slide, the jnani has gone through several stages. Here, Krishna summarizes the stages of spiritual sadhana needed to reap this benefit. Next slide. The first step, Krishna says, is to be a sarva bhuta hita rataha, which literally means being interested in the welfare of all beings. The mind should become so sensitive that I should be able to feel the pain of others also. Psychologists call it the capacity of empathy. It is the foundation for all the virtues of life. Such a person will be the embodiment of Ahimsa, which is also the first value emphasized in Patanjali's Ashtanga Yoga. Thus, morality or ethics is the first stage. So without going through Dharma, there is no possibility of moksha. So how does he achieve the state of mind? It is by reducing or removing Raga Dvesha, which can be achieved through selfless service, Nishkama Karma or Pancha Mahayagna or Karma Yoga. And this will lead to a life of contribution. His mind then will be ready for spiritual practice. So the next sadhana goes hand in hand with the previous one. Next slide please. Sheena Kalmasha, where you weaken your papam by leading a life of contribution. The mind is purified through karma yoga. Anything that obstructs spiritual journey is papam. It is not totally gone, but prarabdham is weakened so that it is conducive for shravanam and mananam. Karma yoga or nishkama karma weakens this papam. Krishna calls such a person yatatmanaha. And that's the next stage seen in the next slide. <clears throat> Yatatmanaha are people who put forth effort in the right direction. Our problem is we say everything is in God's hand. This is a fatalistic view. 
according to Vedanta, spiritual growth or liberation is not God's will, but our own free will. God's grace is av available for all, but whether I am tapping into it is in my hands. Just like sunlight is available for all, but harvesting the solar energy is in my hands. Krishna says in the ninth chapter, my grace is uniformly available for all. Therefore, tapping the Lord's grace is our free will. We have to make this effort as Viveka and Vairagyam does not happen automatically. Similarly, knowledge also does not happen automatically. We have to take the initiative. Tadvidhi pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya, Krishna said. Seek knowledge, seek teacher and seek the shastram. I have to work for the knowledge and discipline the sense organs through Upasana Yoga. These stages of purification, discipline and self-inquiry will lead to the stage of knowledge here called as Rishaya or Jnani. Next slide, please. Who can be called a Rishi? The one who knows. They need not be an external sannyasi. It can be a grihasa sannyasi also. So if you have the knowledge, even though you are amidst the society, you are still a rishi. On the other hand, one without knowledge, even if wearing an ochre robe, is only a pseudo rishi. Shankaracharya calls such a jnani as samyak darshinaha in the Bhashyam, people of right vision. One who understands that the world is Brahman plus Nama Rupa. Next slide, please. But knowledge is beneficial only when it is free from all doubts. Now Vedanta says that the Lord you worship is non-different from you, that this world that you experience is not as real as you, and you are the ultimate reality. Am I ready to accept these statements with conviction? That is the next step in our sadhana. Next slide, please. Where knowledge has to be converted into nishchaya jnanam, into conviction. How? It is very difficult. This conviction comes only by reflection, raising questions and clarifying doubts. This process is called mananam. And when doubts are removed, one is called chinna dvaida or chinna samsaya or sthita pragna, one who is freed from all doubts. This jnani has the conviction that the Lord he worships is the same as Atma and the world he experience, experiences is less real than him. What happens, we'll see in the next slide. Such people attain oneness or aikyam with Brahman. Brahma nirvanam labhante. Nirvanam here means merger. <clears throat> oneness with Brahman does not mean physical merger because Physical merger into Brahman means I am somewhere and Brahman is somewhere else. And like rivers merging into ocean, I move and merge with Brahman. But Vedanta defines Brahman as all-pervading principle. Therefore, there is no question of physical merger. Here, merger means just dropping the notion that I am away from Brahman. So the Jnani with the above qualifications attains this Aikyam with Brahman. So in conclusion, next slide please. Krishna explains this spiritual evolution in a very stepwise process. Through karma yoga, we have to purify our mind. Then through upasana yoga and with self-effort and discipline become a yatat atmana. Through shravanam, gain knowledge and become a jnani. Through mananam, gain freedom from all doubts, chinna dvaidaha. And Nidityasanam has been the topic throughout this chapter. And finally, the one who goes through all these levels of sadhanas will get both Jeevan Mukti and Videha Mukti. Bar Brahma Nirvanam Labante. Aikyam Avanness with Brahman. Thank you. Haryom. Thank you, madam. That was a very comprehensive uh, mantra, I mean, sloka with all the steps. You have explained very well. Madam has explained everything just for the sake of recollection and remembrance. I wish to go through the stages again. So, as we see in the title, this uh, verse has been listed as a Jnana Phalam verse by Swamiji. Why is that? Because we see in the end of the verse, Brahma Nirvanam Labhante. 
So the column has been mentioned. This verse also beautifully depicts all the steps in the staircase or the ladder. So the first one is of life of values, Sarva Bhuta Hiterataha, and also one of Karma Yoga, which Pujya Swamiji has described as Pancha Maha Yajna. And such a life purifies one's mind. Kalmasha are impurities. Shina means to remove. So one does has a purified mind. The next step logically in the teaching is to get Samadhi Shatka Sampatti through Upasana Yoga, which is given by the word Yatatmanaha in this verse. Together with the previous, this person now has Sadhana Chattusthaya Sampatti, Jnana Yogita. So he has now got the ticket to take the journey of Jnana Yoga. He can approach a guru and ask for Jnana. So the next logical step is Rishaya, which is uh, Shravanam. And Shravanam, numerous doubts arise as Madam has presented because it is difficult to believe that everything arises and rests in me. So several doubts come and clearance of the doubt is the next step, which is Mananam, which in this verse is represented by Chinnadvaida. And Nididhyasanam, we saw in the previous verse, as even as Brahma Rupa Abhyasa Nididhyasanam. And the culmination is Brahma Nirvanam Labanthe. So, Samyag Darshanam, this is quoted by Adishankaracharya several times. And this is this oneness of vision. Sarva Atma, Sarvatra Atma Darshanam was there in the previous slide. So this oneness of vision, one vision, not losing the touch of the presence of Brahman. Namarupas may be uh, there, but behind all that is one Brahman alone. And this also sets the difference between Yoga Shastra and Vedanta Shastra. In Yoga Shastra, the idea is to reduce the thoughts in the mind and focus on a Saguna. Devata. Whereas here, since there is one reality alone, I need not close my eyes. Wherever I open and see, there is Brahman alone. So we borrow from the Yoga Shastra to the stage of Sadhana Chattustaya Sampatti. But after that, the meditativeness is not just for a small period in the day when we sit for meditation, but it is every moment through the day. We now go to the last verse for today. And for that, I invite Indumati Madam, over to you, Madam. Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Kama Kroda Vyuktanam Yatinam Yata Chetasam Abhito Brahma Nirvanam Vartate Viditatmanam Lord Krishna has talked about Jnana Yoga in this chapter in the form of inner renunciation. While talking about Jnana Phalam, Lord Krishna summarizes the various stages of spiritual sadhanas also. Jnana Yoga is the ultimate means of liberation. But to come to Jnana Yoga, a person has to go through several preliminary stages. Brahma Nirvanam, oneness with Brahman. Vartate takes place, Abhitaha, both here and hereafter. Yatinam, for the self restrained ones. Kama Krodha Vyuktana, who are free from desire and anger. Yata Chetasa, whose minds are restrained. Viditatmana, and who have known the Atma. Oneness with Brahman takes place both here and hereafter for the self-restrained ones who are free from desire and anger, whose minds are restrained and who have known the Atma. That is, to those wise men who are free from lust and anger, 
who have subdued their mind and have realized God, Brahma, the abode of eternal peace, is present all around. Next slide. We see the first stage is Kama Krodha Vyuktana. Kamaha means desire for acquisition and Krodha means anger caused by the obstacle in acquiring things or anger caused by the loss of things acquired. So Kama will invariably lead to Krodha. This has been analyzed in the third chapter very elaborately. Kama Eshaha Krodha Eshaha Rajoguna Samudbhavaha Mahashano Mahapatma Vidyena Mihavairina. This management of Kama and Krodha is possible when we understand that our happiness does not depend upon what we have, but it depends upon what we are. So we should always focus on what we are and not what we have. If this is understood, our worry for yoga and kshema will be reduced. Yoga means acquisition and kshema means preservation. Thus, managing kama and krodha is the first stage which is called the acquisition of vairagya. Next slide, we see that yata chetasa, those who have integrated, organized their mind. Yatam chetaha antakaranam esham te ya chetasaha tesham. So, mind is the instrument with which we have to do the spiritual journey. Unless the mind is focused enough, one will not be able to pursue spirituality. Therefore, the focusing capacity is otherwise called shamadi shakka sampattihi so that all the organs cooperate with us for our spiritual journey. We see in Katopanishad where Yama Dharma Raja will compare our life itself into a journey. Body is compared to a car or a ratha, sense organs to the wheels, mind is compared to the steering and intellect is compared to the driver. If every part of the car and the driver are fit and healthy, then only one can reach the destination. When everything is fit and available for proper use, then it is called here Yata Chetasa. Next slide, we see Shamadi Shakka Sampattihi, which is the next stage. Then Yatina. The literal meaning of the word Yati is Sanyasi. Sanyasa ashrama is exclusively prescribed for concentrated pursuit of spiritual study. Then the final stage is Viditatmanaha. Jnana yoga means systematic and consistent study of Vedanta for a length of time under the guidance of a competent Acharya. Next slide, we see that the systematic body will lead to clear knowledge and the Gnani is called Viditatma. Viditatma means Gnani. Viditaha, Atma Yenasaha. All these people become Gnanis as a result of the sadhanas. And because of this knowledge, Brahma Nirvanam Vartate. So they all have oneness with Brahma. As a result of this knowledge, that is the merger into the Brahman. Merger is not a physical event. It is an intellectual event. It is a cognitive event. And what is the cognition? What is the knowledge? There is no distance between me and Brahman. In fact, Aham Brahma Asmi. And this merger or oneness is Abhitaha. Abhitaha means both ways. The oneness before death is called Jivan Mukti. The continued oneness after death is called Videha Mukti. The general example that is given in the Shastra is the part space merging into the total space. 
When the body is there, it is called Jivan Mukti. When the body has fallen, it is called Videha Mukti. Jnana will give both. This is Jnana Phalam. Hari Om. Thank you. Thank you, madam, for the nice presentation of this verse, which again deals with the Jnana Phalam as well as the various steps in the spiritual journey of the seeker. So we have seen in the early part of the Gita that there are three coverings which prevent us from tapping the pure consciousness or Brahman or Atman within us. And the grossest was Malam and it was Kama, Krodha and four other Malam. And that is removed by Karma Yoga, which was the Kama, Krodha, Vyuktaha. And the second step was Yatinam. That is that one needs to reduce port, which is position, obligation, relation, and transaction. And one also needs to uh, do class projection, which is to reduce controllership, anxiety, and reduce special prayers. So this helps one to become a sannyasi, at least internally. Yatachetasam, as you have explained, is to have that focus and integration of the mind. And Viditatmanam refers to the journey of Jnana Yoga, which comes after Jnana Yogyata through the previous three. And this again culminates in the phalam, which is mentioned in the end of the verses, Brahma Nirvanam Vartate. With this, we conclude the set of verses for today and also the set of verses for the fifth chapter. Although the fifth chapter actually has a few verses in the end, which act as a prelude for the next chapter, which is on meditation. Adiyom. Thank you. With this, we conclude the fifth chapter. Om Tat Sadhiti Srimad Bhagavad Gita Sub Upanishad Sub Brahma Vidyaya Yoga Shastri Shri Krishna Arjuna Samvade Skarma Sanyasa Yogo Nama Panchamodhyaya uh, My take home message from this class would be that we must learn to handle our impulses at whatever stage of our spiritual journey. We are grateful to Dr. Sundar and to all the speakers of the day, Dr. Ravi Shankar, Sri Venkatesh Ji, Sri Mati Apeksha, Chetna Ji and Indumati Ji. Thank you listeners for your encouragement and support. Last Friday, we completed the Katho Upanishad. We will be uh, soon beginning with Mandukya Karikas in the last week of April approximately. But before that, we will first go over four sessions of important Upanishad mantras. Next class is on these mantras, session one. Um, that will be the 4th of April, um, sorry, um, 26th of April, uh, 2024. Session one will cover some important mantras from Ishavasya Upanishad and some from Kevalya Upanishad. I would mark this um, as very important and definitely make it a point to listen to these, um, this session. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamevavashyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Hi Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Hi Om